research that I do, looking at people who are top achievers, what I found is that we as human beings have an infinite array of talents that we can use to make the world better. The world, as you know, has a lot of crises today. We have endless wars, we have terrorism, we have climate change, we have excruciating poverty, we have diseases we can't conquer. So we really need all the talent we can find. So my research is based on looking at people who become top achievers in their particular field of endeavor. And what I've looked at is what are the behaviors that they use to reach their goals and to succeed. So here are a few of the people I've looked at. I'm not going to read them all out to you because obviously I only have seven minutes. So I'll give you a little idea of some of the people that I study. So as I mentioned before, and looking at all these, I've looked at over 100 top achievers, is that I've just seen an enormous different set of talents that people have. In other words, people don't achieve and become top achievers by all using the same kinds of behaviors. So, no, no top achievers are alike. And the talents that they have are extremely unique. They're little things that we wouldn't generally notice about people. And one reason we don't see this is because when we go to school, we're only measured on two kind of huge uh, categories of talent. Namely, do we get good grades? And at least in the US, are we good at sports? And that's the end of it. You're either talented in one of those areas or you're not. But what I found, we have many more dimensions of talent than those two large categories measure. And when I look at achievers, not only are they different in terms of the array of talents that they use to achieve their goals and become successful, but there is one thing that they all have in common, and that is self-awareness. They know who they are, and they know the little things that they do really well. And they also know the things that they don't do well, and they tend to avoid those things and find other people to do them. So, I want to give you a couple of examples of the kind of talents that I find. Uh, this is a picture of Steve Jobs, and here's Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. And as you know, uh, one of the things that Steve Jobs has, one of his little talents, is his ability to identify great engineering talent and people who could write good software. And that's how he happened to attract Steve Wozniak to design the first Apple computer for him, because Steve Jobs was very well aware that he was not a great engineer, he was not a great software developer. The other kind of talent that I've seen in Steve Jobs is very good at designing visual displays. So they lead the eye and they make it really easy to use the computer systems that he develops. So another little small talent that we generally wouldn't think about. Another person I've studied is Oprah. And I should mention that I study people from all different kinds of areas. They didn't have to be necessarily academics. Uh, there are a range of people. One of the things about Oprah is she has this amazing capacity to instantly connect emotionally with people. And this is what made her show, her talk show, so popular because people would come on her talk show and she would make them feel so comfortable and so connected to her that they would open up and tell these things about themselves on national television that people normally wouldn't reveal. And the other amazing thing was she not only emotionally connected instantly with the people who came on her show, but with the audience. 
Uh, people in the audience felt like she was their best friend when they were interviewed after a show. And they would say things like, well, Oprah always asks all the questions I want to know. Another one is Richard Feynman, who received a Nobel Prize in quantum electrodynamics. And one of the interesting things about him was he had great motion vision. Something that good point guards have. They, they can see little movements of motion that says someone's going to cut and be ready to receive the ball. And he was watching a student one day in the cafeteria at Cornell, and the student was tossing plates up in the air. And Richard Feynman noticed that they wobbled when they rotated. They had this little wobble to them. And so he became intrigued in how you could calculate the rate of wobble of, you know, sort of plates or sears when they're, when they're rotating. And this ultimately led to the work that helped him get a Nobel Prize. So you can see these are very small little things that people do really well, but make a big difference in their life. So I want to talk about one more thing, and that is about Temple Grandin, uh, because we often miss the talents that people have due to our limited ideas of what talents really are. Temple Grandin is a professor at Colorado State University, and she's world renowned for her design of animal holding areas. But the amazing thing about Temple Grandin is that she has autism. And she's hypersensitive to sound and to visual stimuli. And the other thing is that she thinks in pictures. So when she was a child, it was very hard for her to learn how to speak because the only way that she could understand abstract words was to, like a word like under, was to visualize crawling under her table. But she used these to these special, what many people would call a deficit. She turned it into a series of talents when she used these are uh, hypersensitivity of sound and visual stimuli. When she started to design animal holding areas, she realized that livestock, and particularly cattle, animals like this are prey animals. So if there's a slight change in shadow or light, they think that they're about to be attacked by a predator and eaten. And Temple Grandin was able to understand that and also be able to design the, the animal holding areas in a way that would make animals less anxious when they were in there because she could see those slight changes in light and shadow and she knew what she knew the experiences that made her anxious too. So I think to solve the world's problems, these great problems that we face, we really need to expand our ideas of talent and to realize that we as human beings are amazing in a way and that we have all these amazing little things that we do really well. And I hope that each of you will think about all the amazing little things that you can do and also be aware that the amount of talent that people have is infinite. So, I look forward to you all going out and doing great things. <laughs>